Welcome to the video podcast, The Time Consumer, on the move. Today we are travelling in Northern Ireland, once again by boat, and we would like to present you with a brief travel guide. So what do you need to keep in mind? What can you expect? What experiences can we share with you from our last trip? Well, stay tuned to find out. So let's begin by talking boats. There are three marinas here in Northern Ireland where you can hire a cruiser from. Akinver Boat Company is located to the north of Loch Erne on the Broad Loch. Below this is Manor House Marine and further south on the upper lake is the hire company Carrick Craft which also has a base on the Shannon River in the Republic of Ireland. Each cruiser hire company has different types of boats, different sizes, specifications, styles, and there should be something there that would really suit you. We personally prefer boats that have a flybridge. Some boats have both a flybridge and an internal steering position. This will vary depending on whether the flybridge has a closable canopy or not. Ideally, if you are sitting up above, you need to have a canopy option, otherwise you might get very wet. For many years we have used Manor House Marine, and we are very satisfied with the service they have provided. The boats are great, very well maintained, and the fleet is constantly being renewed. The boat we hired is called the Noble Duchess, one of two of its kind. It is a boat with a flybridge and no internal steering position, but the flybridge canopy is completely closable and you can comfortably drive outside even in the rain. At the moment we have a slightly older cruiser called the Noble Captain. This boat has two steering positions because upstairs the top is not completely closable, so if it rains we prefer to drive from the inside, down below, and this works really well. Like other boats, it comes fully equipped with a kitchen, bathrooms, showers and a living saloon. You can connect the boat to land, but there is also a large bank of batteries on board so you can charge mobile phones or camera equipment easily. Nothing is missing. You can comfortably spend several weeks on this kind of boat. Of course, there are also smaller boats available, ideal if you don't want to invest quite as much money. If you're starting off boating, price will become an important consideration. Smaller boats are ideal for two to three people, but have no flybridge, which means you will have to drive from the inside and not feel the wind blow in your face when you're cruising. But even these boats are completely self-sufficient. You can cook on board, shower, use the toilet facilities, all the essentials are provided. Boat rental companies offer at least one of each type, usually even several. It's best to check online or you will definitely find a boat that will suit your needs. So let's look at where we travel in Northern Ireland. Upper and Lower Loch Erne are based mostly in County Fermanagh, in the northwest of Ireland. Loch stands for lake, which is slightly misleading as the Erne is actually a river that flows into the Atlantic Ocean. Before that, however, it forms these two large lakes, 
upper and lower Loch Erne. The lower loch is a very wide and deep lake which can also be very weather sensitive and susceptible to wind. The upper lake is made up of more shallow water and isn't as wide, so calmer with many more small islands and picturesque mooring spots. The lakes are connected by a small river and in the middle lies the famous island town of Enniskillen. In addition to the lakes, there are two subsidiaries. On the one hand, and brand new in 2021, the long-awaited opening of the first few hundred metres of the Ulster Canal. And on the other hand, there is the majestic Shannon Urn Waterway, which takes you through 74 kilometres and 16 locks, through the south of Ireland, onto the historic Shannon, through the middle of the country, and all the way to Killaloo and Ballina. Castle Saunderson, or the mansion, was built in 1840 by the Saunderson family. In 1977, it was sold to a businessman who wanted to use it as a family home. This didn't work out and it was then converted into a hotel, but burned down in 1990. In 1997, the entire site was sold to the Irish Scouts and it still belongs to them to this day. They have developed the area and created a safe environment for scout camps. The chapel on the site was built in 1835 and was based on the Gothic architectural style. It did not burn down and is therefore in good condition. Inside it seems to be fully furnished, at least what you can recognise through the dusty windows. And there is also a crypt for the Saunderson family. In the background you can see what happens if you don't cut your through a hedge for a few years. Just this.
Navigation here on the Northern Ireland waterways is relatively easy. There are markers that are red on one side and white on the other. Three guesses. You'd better not go into the red, just stick to the white. It's actually quite easy to master. You don't need to plan your journey in advance. You can just set off and decide in the morning after breakfast what you want to do that day. There is one exception. If the weather is a bit changeable or if it is a bit stormy, you should definitely plan your trip on Lower Lockern carefully. In a southwesterly wind, it is quite possible that you will get stuck somewhere on the southwest of Lower Lockern and you won't be able to cross the lake in choppy weather. So be sure to pay attention to the weather forecast and do a little bit of planning if you're on the broad water. In the middle and upper Loch Urn, this is not necessary. Here, you just need to keep an eye on the water levels and stick to the middle of the channels if they are low. Otherwise, no planning is necessary. Just go with the flow. If you are sailing in bad weather, you should do some preparation because, as you can see, visibility can get poor and it can be tricky to see the markers and the land can look the same. But we are well prepared with good binoculars and the charts provided by the hire company have the marker numbers. In addition, we have a smartphone app called Navship. It clearly shows your position and you can enter a course where you want to go. So we were definitely well prepared for all occasions. You can moor on any of the public jetties free of charge. This includes mooring in the town of Enniskillen. There are five jetty areas, including a supermarket jetty, where you can replenish your supplies in just a short walk. Jetties are relatively well distributed across the urn, but do bear in mind that moorings can be further away from some villages and getting to shops or pubs might require a longer walk. Enniskillen is a popular destination as it boasts a good selection of pubs, shops and restaurants all within close proximity. This isn't the case further afield and you should plan your trip accordingly. <laughs> Well, now we've made it to the top of Maho. This is the highest point of the Loch Urn area, 
It takes about three quarters of an hour to walk up here through dense forest and lots of steps. If you're fit, it might take a little bit less time, but it is a good exercise, and especially after you've been sitting on a boat for so long. For boat beginners, the urn is actually very suitable as there are no locks here unless you decide to sail to the Shannon via the Shannon Urn Waterway. There is only one lock on the urn system and it's usually open. It's located just north of Enniskillen. The lock is used for water regulation when there is either flooding or low water. In summertime, it is usually open. All cruisers come with navigation charts on board, and these are more than sufficient. They show everything you need to know, where you can refill with water, where you can refuel with diesel, and where you can dispose of your rubbish. If you want to find out more about the surrounding areas, we do recommend a hiking map. Ours had a scale of 1 to 50,000. This will provide you with much more detail if you want to go running, walking, hiking or exploring. But don't worry, the charts that are provided are more than enough to get you started. It is the country and the people that draws us here to Ireland. It doesn't matter if you go to Northern Ireland or to the Republic. We couldn't really tell the difference, well, apart from the accents. The people are very friendly, very talkative and very sociable. In the places where you moor or in local pubs, you can get chatting with people very quickly. It does really help if you can speak English the Irish speak English, well, as far as we could tell anyway, and maybe a few words of German, but you cannot rely on this. You definitely must be prepared to give English a go to be understood. <laughs> We were particularly happy to meet Angela and Mark. They live on their barge and told us a little bit about how this all came about. Well, you're first of all, you're very welcome on board, Nola. Um, I, when I was um, just starting to work, I, I, I my mum and dad used to hire boats 
on Loch Erne, yeah. and I absolutely loved it. And I always, even as a young boy, I always wanted to drive, and it, it never really left me. Yeah. And when I when I was working and I had enough money, I bought a little tiny tiny boat with no toilet and no water. <laughs> And I came down and for the weekend, boat, yeah. and it was a boat. It floated, and I was really happy. Yeah. Um, and as as I went along in life, I actually had to sell the boat to start to start a business. Yeah. But thankfully, the business went really good. So I then bought a, a bigger boat, and that started my passion for for locker. And so I've actually had boats here for 27 years. Um, it's yeah. and it's been so much fun, yeah. um, and and the boats have got bigger as I've gotten older. <laughs> That does not necessarily mean that I'm any better at driving, okay. but, <laughs> but but you know, and, and when Anne and I met, we both fell in love with the lakes, and we decided that it was it was our goal, our aim in life, to get to the point where we could actually live on a barge, and our dream came true three years ago. We had Nola built in yeah. in England, and we had it brought across, and the last three years have been a really exciting time learning how to live on a boat through the winter time through coronavirus um, so there have been challenges yeah. but we have met so many people beautiful people like yourselves <laughs> and you. we we have just yeah. fallen in love with the lakes all over again and every day is different and people say now that i have retired that um what do you do every day every day there's something to do it's yeah. always busy doing things and it's great fun we love it Here's a wishing well. Here's a penny for <laughs> any thought of it that makes you smile. Every diamond dream, everything that brings love and happiness. This is pure tranquility. We are currently lying on a mooring buoy. You will find several located here. At weekends or holiday times, there are popular spots that can get busy. Slipways launching speedboats and jet skis can create lots of wake. So if you're looking for peace and quiet, then avoid these places, because they can sometimes be a bit annoying, and they don't stop until dark. If you're visiting here in June or July, this can mean midnight or later. But don't panic, you will always find a jetty or a mooring boy that offers true peace and quiet. If you want to jet across the water a little bit faster, we firmly recommend a trip with Barry from the Urn Water Taxi.
The atmosphere here on the water itself is quite relaxed. You rarely get upset. Of course, there can be exceptions. A few days ago, for example, we had a small skirmish with an angler. At the time, the fishing season was just beginning. Fishermen sat along the water's edge, and we unfortunately sailed a little too close to someone's fishing rod. Emotions ran high, and voices were raised as we discussed what had happened. After a few minutes of discussion, things eventually calmed and everything was fine. It is important to keep your wits about you on the lakes, as they are to be enjoyed by everyone, including anglers. Our conclusion for boating here in Northern Ireland? You absolutely must come and give it a try. It's an amazing country with natural beauty and the waters are unspoiled and absolutely spectacular. The people are very friendly and sociable. So it's definitely worth a trip. Give it a try, at least one. We can't even count how many times we've come here now because it simply captivates us and never lets us go. You can experience the lock urn system here in Northern Ireland and get a real taste of it in just a week or two. That's enough to get you started. But if you want to see more or maybe even sail down the Shannon, we definitely recommend three to four weeks. Otherwise, it might be too hectic and you won't get to fully enjoy what this beautiful country has to offer you. A little tip. This year we came here for the first time by electric car. That was an adventure on its own, so we made a video, a small road trip video. I'll link this to you below. If you are interested, you can click on it. Yes, so that's it from us here in Northern Ireland. Come and try it for yourself. I promise you, you won't regret it. <laughs>